Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of the Unintended Receiver podcast, uh, except we're doing this as a video cast, this episode. Today, we have uh, two special guests, um, one of which is uh, Steve Hall, the president and CEO of the ADL, and Munis Tahir, who is captain and player of the San Jose Spiders. So this episode is about um, the AUDL, recently announced um, their media broadcasting partnership to show their games in India, which will be happening once the season starts on June 5th, 2021. And as part of that announcement also, uh, another partnership was signed and um, agreed on with uh, with 91 Ultimate. So with 91 Ultimate, they have a merchandise partnership set up um, to distribute their merchandise in India as well for their fans. Do you want to tell us more details other than just leave it at merchandise? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's actually really exciting because, um, as some of you might know, the official disc sponsor of the AUDL is Discraft. And so um, to start off with, we should be getting a few hundred Discraft discs to sell in India from the USA with the AUDL uh, logos and stickers of teams. Um, we're getting those shipped over as we speak. They're in process. So Discraft Discs with the AUDL um, logos. And, and then we have a license to produce and manufacture any AUDL merchandise, which will have their logos on it. Um, and to be of comparable standard and quality. So all the jerseys and kits, shorts, um, wristbands, caps, anything really to do, any merchandise to do with the ADL, which they currently have. And we can also produce our own new things like mugs, perhaps, or stickers or pens, whatever it is, um, with the AUDL trademarks, registered trademarks on it. So we have the license to do that as well. So that's, that's cool. awesome, Jaydeep. And uh, how does this set 91 Ultimate apart? And also before, how does this set 91 Ultimate? ultimate apart from other players like agile or you know players who've been supporting uh, merchandise requests of ultimate players in india why 91 ultimate yeah um it was quite um awesome actually because the adl reached out to us they found us um while they were doing their research into merchandise partners in india and i remember because me and sumedha were running a coaching clinic in hyderabad um, for the police department over there when they contacted us on Instagram. And of course, a lot of that is down to you, Richard. Our Instagram kind of uh, audience develops and uh, expanded thanks to your posts and really engaging creative content. But the AUDL saw us on there, and I think uh, credit goes to you and the podcast team, Maher, as well. Um, so they reached out to us, and you know we, we had a discussion. I talked to Steve, and he said... Um, when he talked about 91 Ultimate being an, you know, an ultimate Frisbee company, um, having like they really liked our company profile, the fact that we had an online shop, um, they saw a lot of potential to partner up and um, fulfill their needs along with you know, the broadcasting of games, you know, allowing fans to be able to purchase ADL uh, merchandise. Um, and we had a really good discussion. I think we clicked. We got, on, got along really well. Um, had a good good chat so um, it seemed to make make a lot of sense yeah that's awesome yeah and uh, for 91 ultimate I think that uh, if if I am correct this would be a really a big partnership since uh, since uh, you know it, it started working in India in terms of uh, a professional partnership that gives it a certain edge so yeah so now we'll head over um to the episode having with the guests. Uh, first, we have Steve uh, talking about the partnership and what the AUDL plans to do in India. So over to that. Today we have Steve Hall. He's the president and CEO of the American Ultimate Disc League. Um, so we're very privileged and honored to have you on the podcast with us, Steve. Hi. Hi, Jadeem. How are you? We're doing great. We're doing great. Thank you. Thanks for joining us again. Um, and your, uh, we've invited you today um, as part of the announcement for the partnership between 91 Ultimate and the AUDL, the merchandise partnership. So that's another fantastic uh, surprise and uh, development we feel for Indian Ultimate and the AUDL uh, at large. 
along with your media broadcast um, uh, partnership that got announced recently as well. Um, I'll just share a bit more about Steve for those people who don't know him. Um, I had the privilege to talk to him in detail uh, recently. Really fun, super um, interesting guy. He's also a co-owner of the Atlanta Hustle. Um, a lot of you will know these team names. Um, he has a strong background in finance, works for you know, places like Citibank and um, and he also still plays ultimate frisbee uh, a few times a week, two to three times a week, which is great to hear. It's always good to hear of people in uh, high positions, leadership positions, uh, still involved uh, playing the sport, just like uh, the UPI executive board, all of them still play. So that was that was great to hear as well. Um, anything else you want to tell us about yourself, yourself Steve? Uh, Jadeep, uh, thanks for that uh, gracious uh, introduction. I, I thought you were going to say someone of such a mature age was still playing. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually going to be playing the Great Grand Masters tournament in Colorado in in July. So uh, I, I just hope to make it three days. That's that's my goal uh, with, without injury. But um, it just uh, a little bit more background on my ultimate. I did start playing in university back in 1985. So uh, you know my career spans about 35 years. Uh, casually, uh, I played one year kind of higher level ultimate. But um, you know. It's, uh, it's interesting because I've always been around Ultimate. My best, uh, my mates were uh, Ultimate players. And even though I lived in the finance world, they were my, my fun. Uh, that was the fun group. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, so uh, it was, it's, uh, it's been nice to be able to kind of marry what I enjoyed as a hobby as Ultimate and then uh, you know, bring it into the business world and be able to grow something that we're very excited about. Right, fantastic, yeah. Yeah, good to know. 30, 30 odd years is, is amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I've seen some of these pictures which are really black and white. I guess you might be in one of them. Yeah. <laughs> There's a black and white scene. In what, the is it that old? I don't know. It just no. it, it feels it it feels that old. Yeah. yeah. Well, we could both relate to that as as masters age players as well. We definitely feel. Yeah. I know what you mean about lasting three days. And, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, R yoga and stretching has never been more important in in my life. So, yes. <laughs> so we thought we'd uh, if we could ask you about kind of a bit of your uh, background. Um, you you did already start off with that, but um, some of how you got involved in AUDL and um, what you're doing today in your position as the CEO of the AUDL. Sure. Well, as I mentioned, I had been you know casually playing ultimate, so. Um, as you said, I was in the finance or banking world. I started with Goldman Sachs in New York and then uh, was helping to build some private equity uh, hedge funds, real estate funds and Citigroup. And I left New York and moved down to Charlotte, North Carolina back in 2009. And when I started playing uh, Grandmasters, uh, we said, hey, uh, you know, we heard about this group that wants to have a pro ultimate um, you know, business. And we said, well, that isn't that interesting. I sent an email and then didn't hear back for a couple of years. But in 2014, got an email saying, hey, we're going to create a South division. Uh, here are the teams. Uh, you know, would you like the Charlotte franchise? So uh, after about a, a month of negotiation and I closed at Lurie before I jumped on a plane to China, um, I, I found myself the owner of, of, the, of the Charlotte team uh, that I then turned around and traded for the Atlanta team about two years later. So you know, it kind of married my interest in, in building businesses. And that's what my family, our family portfolio, we invest in small businesses. And I said, you know, I really like what they're doing because the vision was we've got this great sport. It's fast moving. It's got great highlights to it. The, the issue that we had is that, um, you know, with non-officiating, which we've all grown up with, it wasn't very fan friendly. Um, you know, you play a game to 13 or 17, it could be an hour and a half, it could be two and a half hours, even with the soft cap, hard cap, and that variability is very tough when it comes to embracing media partnerships. Um, and, and so we said, you know, the two changes was one is we'll have four timed quarters. So, you know, at the end of the four timed quarters, the highest score wins. And that hasn't been controversial. Um, obviously, the one difficult part that you know, we've been working through with the ultimate community is the concept of officiating. Yeah. And certainly we've seen yeah, the ultimate world of the observers. We're all getting closer to the same kind of rule set. I'd say the one thing that people probably don't know about ultimate when they say, oh, you know, they have officials that just doesn't feel like ultimate 
is our players actually have control of the game. The one thing that people don't realize, uh, you know, you cannot call a foul on somebody else. So uh, that is, you know, one thing that is different about us and the way we express ultimate is that the officials would do that, but you can call a foul on yourself. And we call that the integrity rule. Mm -hmm. And we have an integrity call almost every weekend, mm -hmm. if not two or three. Yeah. And it's a simple crossing your arms. Uh, we had it in a major um, championship game match a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, a Madison uh, Radicals player called a foul on himself at a controvert oh, at a, a, a really important time. I believe it was against Seattle. And, uh, you know, people were really confused. And they said, no, again, we, you know, the spirit of ultimate still lives in the AUDL yeah. and, and it came through. And so we were excited to see in a very big moment, a player call a foul on himself. So I think that's, that's one thing that, you know, we still embrace and, uh, but we've made it fan friendly and it's all about, you know, making this game exciting, differentiating the game and, uh, but still making it into a package that fits with the media world. And that's just what you have to do as, as a pro sport. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead. And Steve, Rich. how many fans uh, fans does AUDL currently have in the US? Right. So it's it's a great uh, question, Richa. It's we have over a million followers on social media. So that's you know, that's probably the, the one way that everybody that's the big metric that everybody uses. So we literally just crossed over a million social fo uh, followers on social media, and that's you know uh, Facebook, but increasingly Instagram. Um, Twitter, and then TikTok. TikTok has been the fastest growing. Uh, and so, you know, people like the short videos of the great throws uh, with some really fun, you know, fun music. Awesome. And, and uh, you also have a lot of people coming in to watch the games uh, live for, uh, while the game is happening, correct? Uh, we're, still, we're growing. Yeah, we're growing. Okay. We do need more fans in the stands. And that's one okay. of the biggest uh, focus items for us is general awesome. awareness. And I can tell you more about what we're doing. Uh, you know, the ultimate community knows about us. Um, that's terrific. But if we really want to have this sport take off, we need to get the, you know, the casual fans or people who are fans of other sports, uh, yeah. you know, whether it's football or cricket, you know, we, we need to get them to say, wow, that's exciting. Why do I want to spend a couple of hours, you know, to go watch an ultimate match? Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, I think we were going to even, uh, ask a bit later uh, that you know in India you've announced this amazing media rights uh, and it's a big huge landmark for India to be able to see the sport uh, on TV especially within India where you know cricket is such a big religion um, yeah first if you can tell us a little, a little bit about you know why India and why the media rights now um, uh, in India. Sure well I'm, I'm sure the, 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 the first answer is you know, once people say why India because you, you've got a lot of people in India. <laughs> so you know, even if you get a fraction of a percentage of the people in India to embrace your sport, uh, economically, you will do well. Um, and and it is, it's true. I, I don't want to hide from that. That's certainly the, the first thing. But I think for us is that it's a very young. So if you look at the population of India, it's, it's skewed younger than many of the other populations. And we believe our sport is very well set up for, you know, the 14 to 28 year old demographics. So that fits so well for India. You've also got a burgeoning middle class. And so, you know, we're not coming over asking people, you know, to put down, uh, you know, for in, in dollar terms, uh, you know, $75, you know, uh, per match to come in and watch it. It's, it's very accessible. In the States, uh, we charge about 10, 10 US uh, for a ticket. So, you know, we think it's it's a, a sport that you can have a very low ticket price to come in. I don't know what you what you charge to go into a cricket match in India, but we want to be accessible. And I say the one thing also which we can talk about is, you know, we are trying to I'll call it gamify, gamify ultimate, and and really think about how do we differentiate this sport and make it exciting to that 14 to 28 year old demographic. That's that's great. You're you're correct when you say that India has one of the highest demographic dividend and um, it does it would make for exciting in fact right now the current population that plays ultimate in India is also young um, and you know within that a lot of them exist within the 14 to 28 um, that's interesting and 
in india there is i mean there are leagues like uh, indian premier league and india in in soccer league pro kabaddi the also the concept of profession uh, professional league is still is just picking up one of the biggest is ipl and audl will be competing for air time with some of these leagues so you know what kind of plans or tactics or strategies does audl have in mind to essentially, uh, essentially ensure that ultimate sticks uh, with the indian audiences right it's it's a great question it's the same one we actually have to answer in the states in europe everywhere we go we in fact we tell our owners you're in inter- you're in the entertainment business mm. yeah so if you look for a saturday night you can go out and eat yeah you know, once we get through covid uh, you can go back and eat with your friends you can watch a movie uh, you know you can play fortnite until 4am um, there's lots <laughs> of things that you can do with your time um, so we have to shine we have to sparkle we have to differentiate so yeah. <clears throat> i mentioned gamify but let me stop real quickly is that you know, if you look at kabaddi, if I pronounce that correct, I mean, it's a contact sport. Um, yeah. you know, cricket, to me, I think of a series similar to baseball where it's yeah. it's tactical. It doesn't move that fast. Mm-hmm. You're really positioning the players. Um, you know, I think of it, we, we think of in the long run, it's much more like, you know, soccer in the States or football um, where it's fast moving. You've got a lot of action. But there's a couple of things that we think differentiate. Number one is we have a lot more scoring than soccer. You know, a one nil, yeah. you know, soccer match is exciting because, you know, It'll the match, easy. right? Yeah. yeah. If you get a penalty in, in the uh, at the the fifth minute, you know, into in injury time, that's exciting. You're hanging on an edge, right? And that's great. But but people like to see scoring, right? Yes. We're all kind of ADD, ADHD around the world. We like to have things happen to us. So a lot of the matches are 24, 21, 28, 24 in the state. So there's, there's scoring at the end of every exchange, which is great. But let me focus on the technical. I mean, I think this is also why I think, uh, you know, again, this is a, a generalization, but I think uh, the Indian nation enjoys things that are very technical in, in nature, especially the burgeoning middle class. So we want to gamify the sport. So we've got a great flow of action. I think people appreciate the, the, how difficult it is to throw a disc. We have people are fast, they can jump high, good hand-eye coordination, but that's just part of the entertainment. And what we realized in the last year is that the entertainment on the field is just part of it. You know, I think most of us, when you're in the, in the stands, you spend half the time sort of in the States looking at your phone. You're taking a picture, you're with your friends, you're putting it on Instagram, you know, you're doing, you love and doing the selfies, you're checking scores, you know, you've maybe put a fantasy team together, you're checking your bets. So we want to embrace the technical aspect. So we have gone headfirst into sports betting. So uh, we announced the deal with L Sports as an Israeli company. They're going to be the data distributor of all the data that we create. So that's one thing. Um, we're, we're hopefully going to announce the next few weeks uh, an agreement with a large daily fantasy sports company that's based here in the States. Um, they'll be providing uh, the, the lines, uh, free-to-play pools. So free-to-play, you can do that as a minor in the States. Um, and then as an adult, you know, you can make uh, bets. But the United States is just catching up with the rest of the world. Um, and then the two things I think are really going to start to differentiate us is, number one, a video game. So we're working on a console-based video game, first true console-based video game of Ultimate. Uh, we've uh, engaged a company called Firebrand, um, and hopefully you'll see by the end of the, the summer in the States, um, something that will come out on, on Steam, and Steam is a great place, you know, that uh, a lot of people will launch their video games. So that's number one. So you'll, the players will start to see themselves out on video games. The young, yeah, the young population can do that. The, the last thing that you've probably read a lot about is non-fungible tokens, NFTs. So NFTs, um, if uh, you, people in your audience aren't familiar with them, it's, uh, you know, it used to be playing cards uh, that people would yeah, have. Yeah, the old cardboard. Um, but these are electronic, right? And you can have a still shot with a picture of the player, maybe some statistics. But what we're focused on, and you're seeing the really the shift to this, is the five to second video clip. So, you know, the great layout, the great D, the great score, the scuba for the win, yeah. um, five to 10 second clips. And, and that is with um, blockchain, 
you know, you have your certificate of authenticity. You know, if you owned a Monet, you'd have, you know, the art director come in and, and certify that that's a Monet. With the blockchain, you know that, you know, that clip that the AUDL has issued is, you know, an authentic clip and you own, you know, either the sole NFT that we've dropped or maybe we've dropped a pack of 10 or 20 and we've serialized that one to 20. And so in the next two weeks, we're going to drop our first packs. We're dropping them to the owners first. Then we'll include players, fam friends and family, and then we'll make them available to the general public. But we're really excited to do that. And again, our hope is one day the vision is to have a pro league in India. Um, yep. We don't see why we can't have a pro league in India. Um, and so, you know, the, the vision that Rob Lloyd chairman and who is, uh, you know, one of the founders of the current vision here of AUDL, we do truly hope to have pro leagues around the world. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 If you can make it, if you can make ultimate stick in India, you definitely have a really big audience and Indians love cricket. If they love something especially like they treat it like religion sports so yeah right. you'll have something really big <laughs> well, we're gonna try our hardest yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> no i think it's great that the AUDL is doing more so much more than just broadcasting and hosting games um doing all the like you're saying gamifying and partnerships uh, figuring out how to get your merchandise out um it's awesome because it's all going towards promoting the sport increasing awareness um around the world of this you know amazing thing that we're all part of yeah and Jadeep I think you know the one thing that we're trying is you know we you know we uh if for our players you know why why if you're a player you're a high level player you know why choose the AUDL club yeah. is obviously still very popular in the states and and we just had uh, our third player orientation last night so we're speaking directly to the players and we said you know why why play in the AUDL you know clearly if you're a your club um that you know you have to pay pay to play you have to buy your own kit you pay to yeah. travel you have your entry fees uh, we're trying to take that economic burden so one of the things that we're focused on the states is you know it's a sport when they cost you thousands of us there's a lot of great athletes that can't afford to pay thousands of us to travel around to pay and so we want to take the economic burden we want we want athletes of all socioeconomic status to be able to play it and embrace this sport. And I think that's been a barrier. So we want to take that away, number one, so it doesn't cost you anything to play. We pay for your travel. We pay for your kit. We now have a medical network. So you now have uh, a team physician, an athletic trainer. So we're going to help you physically. Um, but now with the video games, they're going to earn money. Um, the, the NFTs earn money. And we're taking a bit of the revenue and we're going to put it into a fund. And, and that fund is also going to be available for the players. We haven't decided how it will be spread to the players, but that's going to be a way, you know, to also get money into the pockets. So, um, you know, we're thinking of the players and how to reward them economically, along with giving them greater exposure around the world, you know, having their faces on NFTs, having their face on the video game, um, on social media, because we want to make them brands. And we've told them that we will also help you think about how you become a brand in your own social media uh, circle. I remember you saying something when we spoke last, Steve, about how the AUDL prioritizes the league and the team and the player. And you said it's player first, then it's team, and then it's the league. I thought that was really nice to hear as well, that it's very player centric and, and a lot of thought has gone into how players benefit and how they're incentivized and how you're, you're always thinking of them. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, I think, and in India, if you help with the whole taking away with the economic burden, yeah. because here econo economics of playing sport is one of the key barriers of entry into sports, and that if if that is something AUDL can help uh, athletes here, that'd be great. At yeah. at a point where we do start pro league in, uh, <laughs> uh, in India, <laughs> yeah. well, that's and that's part of what we said is that. You know, when the, the first team owners were what we would call ultimate enthusiasts who loved ultimate, they wanted to grow it. So we all have the same vision, but they may not have been as experienced business people. Maybe their pockets weren't as deep. And so you've seen the ownership of the AUDL teams change quite a bit of the last five years where you're now having people come in who, who really don't know ultimate that well. 
but they're uh, they're very media savvy. They're they're business people. They're entrepreneurs with deep deeper pockets, and that's allowing us to invest, you know, in the sport, in the teams, and the players. And so, um, you know, we still have a long way to go, but um, you know, and our players are have full time jobs now. But you know, we're doing the little things like you know, instead of a coach bus, you know, you fly to a game. Instead of staying, you know, four people to a room, it's two people to a room. Little little things like that, you know, which uh, which you know you appreciate as you get older. Uh, yeah. so you're not sharing, you know, sharing a bed with someone else who, uh, you know, is sore and you know is achy and all of that. So mm-hmm. um, those are little things we're working on and, and trying to make those improvements. That's great. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And I mean, talking about partnerships in India, you have one partnership with ninety one ninety which is merchandise um, and you know are there any other similar partnerships that you're exploring in India um, that that would kind of help uh, grow the sport in India? Uh, great question so right now just Eurosport we announced you know, from a media so you'll be able to see games on a slightly delayed broadcast um, I, I think that's the plan um, if they uh, broadcast them live would be very early on a, on a Sunday morning um, so that's the that the uh, partnership with Eurosport's the biggest, 91 Ultimate, and we want to see where we go from there. So we're excited. We're ready to put more time and resources. Um, and I think that's one of the things we hope 91 Ultimate will do, will help us introduce, will introduce us to other people. And so, you know, we really look at you all as, you know, the eyes and ears and, and our, our extension on the ground in India. So we're excited to partner with you and, and let's see how we can grow this, uh, grow this further. Fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot, Steve. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. We'll we'll definitely keep thinking of new ways to partner and expand your reach and influence in India as well. Uh, so count on us for sure. So um, yeah, thanks a lot. So th- thanks so much for coming on today. We really appreciate it. Um, and it's great to have AUDL uh, starting to do much more in India now. Um, obviously, we've all seen games and highlights before, which was already having a great impact. And now this is like 10 times that. So it's fantastic to see. And we hope to have you on the podcast again one day and also other people that we've mentioned uh, from the AUDL, people like Rob, Lloyd, um, and some players and captains as well. So uh, hopefully it won't be the last time we see you. I think for today, we've taken up enough of your time and we want to thank you again for that. Uh, no, my pleasure. I, yeah, we uh, thank you so much for, for giving us the time to talk about the, uh, the, the, the players, the teams, and the league. Uh, we hope you get a lot of our players on, as we yeah. said we want them to uh, you know, be brands. We want everyone in your country to know that a, a lot of your uh, brethren who live in the States now are playing and they're growing the sport. And uh, one day I do actually hope to come to India and uh, to be part of a match. So uh, I look forward to that, that trip someday. Oh, absolutely. Anytime. Yeah, we'll, we'll take you around and uh, show you some good food. Good time in India, yeah. for sure. And ho- ho- hopefully, I can I can get on the pitch and play with you, and I will be the the permanent handler. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Def- yeah. done. Yeah. done. Uh, we'll we'll cut for you for sure. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. Thank, thank you. Thank good. you so much for the time today. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi everyone. We have a really special guest today for you. We have Munis uh, Tahir from San Jose Spiders. Hi, Munis. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good, good. Um, So, I mean, we're really excited to have you on the podcast, the first, uh, so to speak, uh, star person on our podcast, uh, an international person after Steve. We had Steve last, uh, uh, just I think earlier this week we spoke to him. And so this is a follow up uh, to the conversation with Steve Hall, who's CEO of um, AUDL. And um, yeah, you are going to possibly be the first face from EUDL connecting with Indian audiences. So no pressure for you. Um, but yeah, um, and and just for everybody, a little bit about uh, Munis. Uh, you know, he is the current captain of San Jose Spiders. Uh, uh, the Spiders are the uh, the only two-time tit- uh, title winners of EUDL. 
and uh, munis uh, used to play soccer until high school and then unfortunately had a concussion and did not enjoy the amount of contact in the sport and lucky for ultimate moved to ultimate uh, in high school and started playing high school uh, played for four years for uc berkeley men's team and did in fact lead the team into the national championship uh, tournament which is also a great uh, win for the team uh, so woohoo <laughs> for you and, and the rest of the team and uh, Um, yeah you started playing ultimate then and uh, you know you uh, you can uh, uh, you're going to tell us about your journey into AUDS so i want to take on uh, that from you but uh, yeah it's great that you're part of AUDS you you were from um, uh, Wash- you are from uh, washington dc originally and you do have roots in india you have uh, your parents are from kozhikode kerala um, and kerala currently plays recreationally in india and you are representing kerala uh, professionally at like the peak so which is like such a vast difference a vast difference but yeah uh, yeah thank you so much for being with us on the podcast uh, jedi do you want to take over from here yeah sure yeah hi hi monis <laughs> Hey, um, Deep, thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries. We're on it. Um I thought we'd just start if you could uh tell us about your journey into the AUDL, how it all happened, where did it come from? Sure. Yeah, I guess um back in like 2017, 2018, um in my first year at UC Berkeley, uh, I had a couple of the teammates uh from that team make the local San Francisco pro team. Um and so getting to watch their games and seeing their pro experience you know getting to see them look good in their pro jerseys uh making big plays under the lights i was definitely really really inspired by those guys and i knew that if i worked hard uh there's no reason why i couldn't be at that you know playing on that field as well um and so the next year uh in 2018 19 2019 uh, i actually went to the san jose spiders tryouts uh and the first round i played pretty well uh fortunately i got invited to the second round but Uh, the second round actually conflicted with another college tournament that I had. Um and so this Spiders decided they were going to send some people to this college tournament. There were a lot of college players that were going to be trying to make the team there. Uh, and so when it was my turn to be, you know, scouted and watched, uh I actually got a little bit hurt. Didn't play too well, uh and I remember feeling really really upset at the end of that day. Um but fortunately, you know, there's still the second round of tryouts uh being held and so I actually bought a train ticket uh, from the tournament. to attend the second round of tryouts and sort of try to redeem myself uh and I ended up playing pretty well uh and you know fast forward a couple of weeks I get an email saying uh you know we'd love to have you on the San Jose Spiders as a practice player uh and I pretty much just broke out into tears in my college room just because I, I couldn't believe that you know I was able to work hard and and make that happen um yeah. and so over the course of that 2019 season uh we had some ups and downs uh and I actually ended up getting promoted onto the uh, the full roster I uh, got to score my first goal, throw a couple of assists, you know, celebrate a little bit in the end zone. Uh and I definitely I got that pro frisbee bug. I really really enjoyed, you know, just playing at that level. Mm. Uh and so this year, uh the team's rebuilt a lot. Uh I'm back at the uh, you know, uh bottom of the roster trying to earn some more playing time. Uh we brought in a lot of talent as we try to make a run for the championships this week or uh, this season rather. Um and so I'm really excited to, you know, give my best effort at practice at games. Uh, and really try to earn my own playing time as well. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a really interesting story and like talking about tryouts. I think there are a lot of players in in India um because we have a fairly open tryout where almost anybody and everybody does try out because they want the feedback as well and um a lot of people have kind of mental struggles during tryouts. So um yeah, it's it's good to hear like or interesting to hear your own journey and and like how that impacts you and the emotional journey as well it's really really yeah. cool yeah can i ask a question manish what was your highlight play at the tryout if you remember or if you don't <laughs> <laughs> um so there's a phenomenal cutter in the league uh that used to play for san jose uh, he currently plays for atlanta and his name's antoine davis he's widely regarded to be the fastest man in ultimate um and you know he can get the frisbee in his hands no problem Uh what people don't know is that he can also throw goals. And so I knew Antoine just because he had come and helped out uh, the UC Berkeley team every once in a while. Uh and so he and I got paired on the same team for those tryouts. And any time he got the disc under, 
I would just put my head down and sprint as hard as I could. And when I looked up, the Frisbee was just right in front of me. And so I ended up going scoring seven or eight goals just from uh, Antoine throwing me the Frisbee wow. alone. And Antoine, awesome. you know, being a, a player that I always looked up to, it was really, really cool to just be like, hey, man, like, great throw. And he would just give me credit and say, no, like, you know, you earned that goal for yourself. Like, you don't have to thank me or anything like that. Uh, that was a really, really humbling moment. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, some, some of us may have heard the San Jose Spiders cheer, but I, I actually got to know it for the first time recently. Can you do it for us? Yeah. So the, uh, the cheer is eight legs, one heart. And so we say that three times, uh, somebody in the huddle will say eight legs and the rest of the team will say one heart. Mm. And we say that three times and then we count to three and we say spiders. Uh, so it sounds something like eight legs, one heart, eight legs, one heart, one, two, three spiders. Uh, and a lot of the times, uh, a lot of our fans will catch on as soon as we, you know, start just screaming at the top of our lungs. Uh, and so if you're ever at a Spiders game or if you're watching from home and you hear it, uh, definitely feel free to join in. We'd love to have you. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Such yeah. a great chair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm getting goosebumps show. just now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you have roots in India and uh, uh, we, uh, I mean, tell us a little bit about how it is to uh, play in AUDL in terms of your family's reactions, uh, the support you get um, and, uh, you know, what are some everyday challenges uh, that, that you are facing as, as a person with Indian origin and also why do you think that there are less or, uh, you know, low representation of Indian origin players in the AUDL or overall USA ultimate? Sure. Um, so, you know, being of Indian origin, I'm really excited that the league is expanding our audience into India. Um, admittedly, my family's still learning, you know, how the game is played, but their support is still just as strong as our most dedicated fan. Uh, I think that's the greatest part of sports in India is the, the fans are always cheering and supporting as loud as they can. And especially with championships being held in my hometown, I'm hoping I can bring out a lot of my friends and family and bring that sort of Indian spirit to an AUDL game. Um, as far as why there are, you know, fewer players of Indian origin in the American ultimate scene, I think that's mostly because the sport as a whole is still growing. Uh, I think as we start to create more and more secondary school and college Frisbee programs, uh, that more Indian kids will get interested in ultimate and will have the, the resources, the coaching to stay in the sport, uh, for a long time. Um, with all that said, uh, you know, I hope that as I continue to play in the AUDL, I can sort of be an example for those younger Indian players and show them that you can make it to the highest level uh, so long as you work hard. Uh, and as far as, you know, personal struggles, uh, I don't think it's so much as me being Indian as much as I got a pretty late start to some of the young talent that's in the league right now. Um, a lot of these younger players that are playing at this level um, have started playing way, you know, early in secondary school, whereas I only really started uh, in college. Now, a lot of the older guys on the field would say, you know, that's still plenty of a head start and you're still extremely young and you can do really well. But I sort of have that chip on my shoulder of I'm always trying to catch up to those other young players that have played just a couple years more than me because I don't want that, uh, you know, experience, the, that gap in experience to, to really matter once it's time to play them. Yeah, that, that's really humble of you. I did miss saying this, that, you know, the uh, coach of current coach of Spiders is used to be your coach at college and who picked you up uh, from college because he saw potential and saw promise in you as talent and bought you in. So, I mean, even though you started late, you still have a lot of promise, I see, I think, and I think people see it. So, you know, like you, your hard work is paying off and I hope your, it continues and hopefully Spiders does do well this season for uh, within the AUDL. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's really sweet of you to say. Uh, and you you definitely hit the nail on the head. I don't think uh, I would be competing at this level if it wasn't for my coaches and a lot of my older captains when I was first starting out. Um, a lot of these guys were willing to stay hours after practice to help teach me how to throw a flick or teach me how to throw a backhand, teach me how to jump high, teach me how to run faster. Uh, things that I often overlooked because of my soccer background. Uh, there were a lot more hidden techniques that I think I spent the time working on, um, but I don't think I could have learned it on my own. It was definitely because of those coaches and those captains that helped me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally echo that. That I, uh, I mean, the coaches have made a biggest made made, made one of the biggest impacts on my career uh, or playing time in ultimate. 
Um, so Munis, um, as as you're now um, captain of San Jose Spiders, playing in the ADL, very kind of successful team as well, having won two championships, and of course, like you're, you're you know, there's still a long path ahead as well. But um, and and today, this is you know, this video cast is an example of this. But how would you like to be involved in what's happening in India and the growth of the sport, the growth of ultimate frisbee in India? How do you see yourself being involved or influencing? Sure. Yeah. Um, so my main goal for connecting with our new Indian audience is to try to be as accessible as possible. Um, we just talked about how, you know, a lot of my coaches and my captains were a big reason for my development. Uh, and I know that Indian ultimate as a whole is still growing. Uh, and so I would love to be one of those resources for as many Indian fans as I could possibly be. Um, so I would love to answer any questions uh, Indian fans might have, whether that's, uh, you know, about my American tournament experience, what the professional Frisbee experience is like, or even just providing advice on improving ultimate skills, whether that's cutting techniques, throwing techniques. Um, ideally, if any 91 Ultimate fans can reach out to either 91 Ultimate or myself through social media uh, with, you know, just what you would like to see from me or any questions you would have. I'd be happy to just start making instructional videos and trying to post them uh, and try to be as much of a help to the, the Indian sport as I can. Um, ideally, if the ADL manages to connect with a large Indian audience over the next couple of years, uh, I'd love to try and build a camp in India where some of the AUDL's best players can come and teach Indian sports or teach Indian ultimate players, you know, the skills required to compete at a high level. Uh, but at the end of the day, I want to be a resource uh, for Indian ultimate players. Uh, and I want to help them, you know, grow the sport in their local communities. And I'd love to hear any ideas the fans might have for how I can try to help. Yeah, absolutely. Hey. Yeah. And I yeah. like that. I like that you see yourself as being accessible, right? Like that's really cool. Like people can message you anytime. I think that's going to build like a really good relationship for yourself and Indian ultimate and the, you know, the players here or the coaches, even leadership. We really like, they'll be really, um, appreciative of being able to just chat to you on social media or, or over email, whatever it is. And then, yeah, of course, like we'd love to have uh, AUDL players come and share their tips and tricks over here. Because I think you mentioned something in our one of our previous discussions about form, like fundamental form. You can see how in the way you've seen India play at the world stage and the form could be better, right? Is this something you talked about? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a chance yeah, to watch a lot of uh, Indian Ultimate games. Uh, I loved watching India play Australia in the, I think it's a 2018 U24 mixed game. Perth, yeah. Uh, and I loved seeing the amount of passion that those Indian players played with. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was really inspiring. I had goosebumps just sitting on my couch watching that game. Um, that being said, I was impressed by a lot of the upwind throwing techniques um, that some of like, the top level players had. But I also noticed that other players on that team uh, still managed to have some inconsistencies in their form, uh, which is why a lot of the times, uh, you know, they would dump it back to their center handler really quickly rather than being confident looking downfield and throwing yep. a huck, yep. um, which tells me, I mean, I think they're, they're fairly simple fixes. Yep. And it's just a matter of practicing them and being more consistent. Um, but I, I've had the ability to be coached by some of the best in the sport. Uh, I've learned a lot of really great exercises and drills, simple things, just 10 minutes a day uh, mm. that you could do to improve your throws, improve your cuts. Um, and I think really if there are any Indian ultimate players that want to get better and have the time to do something every single day, that there's definitely something that they could do or I could teach them to do um, to, to help get better really quickly. Awesome. Great. Do you know how to speak Hindi? Because <laughs> had to learn some Hindi to talk to players here. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. I might. I I know a little bit. I know a couple of Bollywood songs by heart, but uh, I'll definitely be practicing my Hindi. Oh, nice. Know. That's that's a good start. That's a and good he, start. He knows Malayalam. He was saying a little bit. Oh yeah, I know. I know enough Malayalam to to tell when I'm being yelled at. Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> That covers most of India, most of South India, I mean, which is yeah. the majority of the community. Yeah. I, I think your uh, Jedi Meghna is going to come and beat you up. She said there are more Tamil players than Malayalam players. No, but they would understand, right? Most of Tamil Nadu understands Malayalam yeah, yeah. and vice versa. I guess. I guess. I guess. <laughs> but yeah, you, you'll have to be ready, Munis, 
to uh, be bilingual pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> We had put out a post uh, on Instagram for people to ask questions to you. Uh, we got a bunch of questions, uh, a few messages even. Uh, Brian Tan, he, I think he's a friend of yours. He said hi and then he misses you. <laughs> I can see that. Oh, he's you have blushing. Close... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, look at you blush. <laughs> so yeah, he says hi and he says he misses you. And uh, we had a few other bunch of questions, a uh, few from India and a few a few from international uh, of fans of spiders. Um, we originally decided to pick one, uh, but we're going to do all of these as rapid fire. We we will discuss one with you a little bit in more detail. Uh, so there's a, a player called Arvind Raj, who's a young player from the team called Alphas in Auroville, uh, uh, India. And he submitted a question asking that, you know, um, do you recommend ultimate as a profession? And can anyone be a full-time ultimate athlete for life? What would you say to him? Sure. Uh, I'd say, Arvind, uh, it's coming. <laughs> Admittedly, a lot of my teammates right now uh, are all working a full-time job on top of being a professional ultimate player. Um, so right now, our responsibilities as players are about 10 to 13 hours of training. So that's track, uh, you know, track workouts, uh, gym workouts, and just normal practices. Per week. Um, is... uh, per week, yeah. Yep. Uh, and then we have games as well. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the, the league is still growing. The sport as a whole is still growing. Um, so maybe by the time you can play in the AUDL, you could definitely do it as a profession. Um, but I guess my main advice would be if that's something that you're looking out uh, to do, definitely start to fall in love with the, uh, the work ethic. I think that's what makes, uh, that's what separates high level ultimate players from just talented ultimate players is that work ethic and that, uh, the sort of mental grit to not try to lose any matchup. Uh, you know, you're always hustling as hard as you can. You always have to be the most fit person on the field uh, if you're going to try to get blocks or score goals. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, hopefully I'll get to see you uh, on the AUDL field and hopefully, you know, we'll both be doing it as a full-time job. Uh, but if that were to happen, it's because, uh, you know, we both love running and getting in the gym just as much. Awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's really great that you've touched upon the work, work ethic part of it. I think it, it, it really, that's what makes the big difference. And uh, if one wants to play professionally, then you need to approach it as, a, a, you know, as, as discipline, as, as, you know, putting in all. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, thank you for bringing that out. Uh, and we'll move into the rest of the questions as rapid fire. So I'm going to just shoot the question and you have to respond to me. Um, okay, so the first one is, uh, who is your biggest fan? Who's my biggest fan? Uh, Brian apparently Tan, it's Brian Tan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, it, if it wasn't Brian, it'd probably be my mom. Uh, mm. Just because I'm judging... Oh, Judging by the fact that she still is trying to understand Ultimate, but was still willing to, you know, come out to the national tournaments. Uh, you know, she's still always bugging me for pictures from practice, which who takes pictures <laughs> at practice? Uh, I think she's definitely going to be the number one fan. Uh, right. So hopefully one day, you know, I'll get to play in front of her. Uh, oh, you know, wear sure. a high mom shirt or something like that. Under my jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, I, I think I remember doing this to my mom once which is very silly i think i was oh no i was on radio i said look ma i'm on radio I said that <laughs> yeah. hey mom i'm on the uh, unintended receiver yeah. podcast yeah yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay the next one i'm not sure who the crowd uh, scrunchy boys if i'm saying it right uh, but i think it's yeah scrunch boys who is your favorite scrounge boys. So first, please tell us what is this scrounge boys and who is your favorite of them? Oh, okay. Uh, so the scrounge boys are a local indie band uh, from Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, I think managed by my friend Robbie Waxman. Uh, so wow. shout out to Robbie. Uh, I guess you're my favorite scrounge boy because honestly, he's the only one I know. <laughs> the manager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay um and or how do you prep for match days sure so my prep for match days actually starts two days before the game itself um with making sure that i take my foot off the gas pedal when it comes to training um so normally 
two days before a game or a tournament, uh, I'll stop training really hard, maybe do some light exercise, but main goal is to try to keep my muscles fresh. And most of my focus is on getting eight to nine hours of sleep and making sure that I'm eating right. Um, so, you know, no fast food, uh, especially the day before a tournament. Um, but essentially I'm thinking about 8 a.m. Saturday morning. Um, I want to wake up feeling good. And all that should be going through my mind is I'm going to eat a banana, eat a bagel and win a Frisbee game. That's awesome. <laughs> That's quite um, methodolo uh, methodological and quite uh, uh, like two days in advance is a lot. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And that's quite, quite it's dedication. Good, it's good for our players yeah. to hear that, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and do you or spiders have any superstitious rituals that you all follow? Uh, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> but, I don't know if the I don't know that the spiders have any superstitious rituals. I'm trying to think if I have any. Um, Hmm. breakfast on game day seems to be quite <laughs> religious yeah yeah definitely breakfast on game days i can't eat anything that that's going to make me feel heavy yeah uh oh pickle juice oh, yeah, pickle yeah. juice oh. is my secret <laughs> yeah. so it's full of salt it's full of electrolytes uh so it helps prevent cramps it you know some people hate it i grew up loving pickles so i will drink pickle juice all day uh yeah. but that might be my superstition is <laughs> At least half a half time or something like that, I'll have yeah. a jar of pickle juice and I'm just going to finish it and then try to drink water so I get the taste out of my mouth. I mean, especially this summer where I'm going to be wearing a mask, I think I'm going to need to bring a couple of oh, sticks yeah. too, because otherwise I'm going to just be smelling pickles while I'm running. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I noticed the pickle juice being a big thing in European Ultima as well. Like it's a mm -hmm. new trend craze. Everyone's just like downing during the tournament. <laughs> It's quite a salty superstition. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what non-disc sport would you probably play? What You've already tried soccer. <laughs> yeah. You know, now that I think uh, I learned a lot of good, like, cutting techniques and stuff like that, uh, I might want to take, uh, take a shot at football. That being said, uh, soccer is definitely uh, a sport that's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, so if I could, you know, play in the premier league or something like that, that'd be awesome. Yeah. But, you know, ultimate ultimate's done a lot for me. Uh, I love playing ultimate at the end of the day. I just kind of want to run around and, you know, sweat a little bit and ultimate's great for that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, um, and I think that, uh, yeah. Who are some players you are excited to play with this year? Play with, so teammates, uh, t uh teammates as well as, uh, as opponents. Sure. So uh, this year, uh, we're bringing back one of, you know, one of my favorite cutters to watch in Mark Lynn. Uh, we're also bringing some really talented downfield players in Sawyer Thompson and Andrew Moore. Um, those guys just watching them at practice. One, they're extremely difficult to guard. Uh, but two, they've been three of the, those three guys are, you know, the nicest teammates uh, that I could have ever asked for. Uh, after every practice, I'm always asking them for tips or feedback on my performance and what I could be doing to get better. And not only are they willing to, you know, stop and give me that answer, but they're also willing to, at the next practice, try to track any sort of improvement, uh, find any bad habits that I want to work on. Um, and that's always been really, really helpful. Um, as far as opponents, uh, one of my old college teammates is actually playing for Seattle. His name's Tommy Lynn. Uh, and so I'm, he's one of the, the guys that I watched play for San Francisco. Uh, and so I've actually never got to be his teammate on the pro field. I've also never played against them. So to play against them on the pro field, uh, it's going to be really exciting. There are a lot of other guys from UC Berkeley on the spiders and, you know, we're all excited to play Seattle and just beat Tommy and let them know that we beat him. Nice, nice. Are you, are you, uh, I, can, I, I almost feel like a little bit of jumpiness, like you might just get out of your seat right now, start playing <laughs> and thinking and talking about it can almost be like that. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of my teammates know that I'm, I'm really passionate about playing the game, playing the game well. Uh, you know, winning isn't my only objective. I just love playing hard. Uh, and I think whenever I get excited from, you know, just thinking about playing high level ultimate, you're right. A lot of the times I do want to just jump out of my seat. Actually, before we started recording, I was feeling pretty sleepy. And now I don't know if I'll be able to go to bed. It's 
12, <laughs> 11 in the morning here. So I don't know if I'll be able wow. to go to bed until one or two in the morning now. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay, and I think we just have a couple left. The second ask is, how would you convince Khalif El Salam to move to Spiders if you were to? Oh, how would I try to convince Khalif? <laughs> you know, it's hard to convince Khalif to do anything. Uh, <laughs> Khal Khalif is a really strong-willed person. That's why he's won so many championships. Uh, and honestly, uh, Khalif is somebody that I've been DMing on Twitter a lot. Uh, just <laughs> saying like, you know, hey, you're somebody I've looked up to. Do you have advice, uh, you know, on how I could get better? He's never really seen me play. I think the one time he seen me play was when he didn't know who I was and I actually scored some goals on him. And oh. you know, after that game, I was like, hey, uh, you're one of my favorite players. I can't believe you let me score on you. And he was like, oh, no, you earned it. Since then, he's been, you know, one of the guys that I've been asking for help. I don't know if I'd want him to be my teammate. I think I'm motivated having him as an opponent and, you know, sort of putting a target on his back. Uh, okay. He joined our rivals uh, in San Diego. Yeah. So he's definitely going to be somebody that yeah. I get to play a couple of times. And I'm excited to, you know, row every single matchup and, and sort of play against them. So I'm not sure how I feel about playing with them. Okay. Awesome. Okay. And the last one is, which female ultimate player are you currently fanboying about? Oh, well, that's an it's assumption. It's got to be. Yeah. Sorry, what was that, Jadine? That's an assumption that, that that is the case, but yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it, it's definitely true. Uh, I love watching Women's Ultimate. I think there is a friend of mine named Jenna Krugler who will be playing for the San Francisco Falcons in the, the Women's Western Ultimate League. Uh, she's also from UC Berkeley. Uh, she was actually a U20 uh, gold medalist. So she won oh. the, uh, the under 20 world championships. Um, but she's somebody that uh, really taught me to look beyond just working hard and trying to get better at ultimate and really have joy in playing at a high level. Uh, and so getting to pick her brain and, and see why she continues to play ultimate for so long at such a high level really inspires me. Uh, and I love watching her play because she's always playing, you know, one of the, as one of the hardest players on the field. Uh, she's relentless in trying to get the Frisbee and score a goal for her team and you know i just love watching her play so that would definitely be my answer to who i'm fanboying right now awesome great okay you've done well and nice. i think yeah I, I in india we have this uh, coffee with current so generally this rapid fire happens there and then you get a hamper but here we're just giving you some love <laughs> for being here and uh, you know sharing all these answers very honestly you've given some really fantastic things for us to take back and for the Indian community to uh, take back as well. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, as always, you know, I'd love to continue to be on the podcast if, you know, if that's what Indian fans want to see. I'd love to connect with as many Indian fans as I can. Um, so, you know, please try to reach out to me on social media. My, my doors are always open. I'd love to give any advice or just talk about my experience. And hopefully, you know, one of these Indian Ultimate fans will come and play with me or against me in the AUDL one day. That's awesome. It it got it could most probably be uh, Sivaraman or Rocket, one of the two uh, top level players right now. But could be anyone else even. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Uh, was it Arvind Raj Arvind. from Alphas, right? Yeah, Arvind Raj, exactly. Yeah. Um, Richard, I thought if you could mention a few names of those who submitted those questions, it might be questions? a good shout out. Yeah. Although ah, I feel like okay. the last one was you, but. <laughs> yeah, last one was me. Uh, one second. I'm going to just pull out the names. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so uh, I think, so shout out to Nandan, uh, Arvind Raj, there's someone, uh, Robbie Wax, uh, Ishan Sharma, um, straight out of Jerusalem. I don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah, a lot but, of these people are my teammates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, these are some names that I have written down. And yeah. Brian Tan. And yeah, Brian Tan. <laughs> and Brian Tan. Shout out to everyone who submitted the questions and uh, thank you so much. Uh, and yeah, as, I mean, uh, any last like message or parting wise wisdom word for uh, future current uh, fans of Spiders? Uh, you know, thank you for listening. I hope you all watch some of our games on Eurosport this summer. Uh, and, you know, if you'd like to follow along my journey as a pro Frisbee player, you can follow the San Jose Spiders or myself on social media. 
Um, and again, my door is always open. I would love to help as many Indian Ultimate players as I can. Um, so feel free to reach out. Don't be shy. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, through the podcast, I come across as welcoming. <laughs> but, uh, you know, don't be intimidated. Uh, you too could be a high-level Ultimate player in, in a matter of four to five years if, if you work hard at it. Thank you. And good luck for the ne- for the season coming up. I think a few weeks left. Uh, so yeah, enjoy your pickle juice and <laughs> keep stocked on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Manis, could you just share your social media handles, what they are for both sure. the team and yourself? Yeah. So you can follow me at Munis the here, get my first name and last name. Um, yeah. On- Instagram is probably the easiest way. Yeah. Uh, same thing for the San Jose Spiders. It's at SJ Spiders. Um, and I think we're mostly active on Instagram. I think we're also trying to build up our TikTok as well. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. That's up and coming medium. Short videos, right. which is banned in India, yeah. but yeah, the reels are all <laughs> really? just as good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You, you should possibly do a Bollywood number uh, TikTok <laughs> dance scene. <laughs> Yeah, if there are, if there are enough people that would want that, uh, I'll post a, a Bollywood dance or something like that too. Yeah. There are enough awesome. people that want that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think a, I think a cool thing would be uh, if we could get video submissions of you know sort of like Bollywood dance celebrations, and then yeah. if I score a goal in a game, uh, I'll be sure to do that. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, we we can do that. <laughs> no, Jadeep, really no, nice. no, Jadeep, no, no. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all I know. Along with you. Yeah. <laughs> Knowledge of Bollywood. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Manis. Yep, sure thing. Yeah.